What's up, everybody? Jason Messer here, Editor-in-Chief of Cheat Code Central. Thanks for uh, checking out the stream on this Thursday afternoon. Thursday morning, technically. Uh, so, how's everybody doing? Thanks for uh, checking out the stream. For anybody in the chat or watching this back on our feed later on, be sure to uh, follow our feed, if you don't already, at uh, Cheat Code Central, where you can get all of our notifications when we do go live on our live streams. And you can, of course, always follow me on all social media, at Jason Messer. So, what are we going to do today? I think we are going to... Well, actually, I know what we're, uh, we're going to play. We're going to play some Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, the reason why is we just got a huge uh, kind of a, a, a patch that was given to us yesterday and that came with a nice little uh, bonus that we're going to dig into um, so I think we're going to uh, spend some time in the crypt today because I'm specifically looking for a couple things and that's going to be fun kind of running around maybe, maybe play some online a uh, couple couple quick online matches not sure about that I, I pretty much uh, I saved most of what I wanted to do last night in the crypt for today because I knew I was going to live stream it. so uh, I'm probably going to spend a lot of time with that but first, we're going to talk about uh, the the classic, not classic, the Genesis Mini. I keep wanting to call it the Sega Genesis Classic, but it's not. That's different. It's the Sega Genesis Mini, which is the uh, emulation, clone console, whatever you want to call it, the official version coming out here soon. So we're actually going to talk about that a little bit, and then we will jump into the uh, the actual stream of the game. But yeah, guys, be sure to let me know uh, any questions or comments you might have in the chat room, and I will answer those live on stream. And having said that, let's talk a little bit uh, talk a little bit about Sega Genesis. So as of today, there are about twenty of the pack-in games that have been confirmed for the Sega Genesis. Uh, Mini. Again, I keep wanting to call it the Classic. It's not the Sega Genesis Classic. It's the Sega Genesis Mini, which is Sega's answer to uh, the Nintendo's and PlayStation's kind of mini emulation consoles that have the uh, bundled-in, packaged-in games. And, of course, you knew that eventually it was just a matter of time before Sega jumped on the boat. Uh, so, as of right now, what we know is there are going to be 40 titles. And uh, of the 40... We have 20 confirmed, and uh, actually, let me get up. So let me pull up some information here. So it's going to drop September 19th of this year. So that is going to be right around the time. Obviously, they wanted to do a, holi a holiday window, so they want to hit that holiday season. Uh, this is going to be going in right around the Black Friday shopping, which is always you know a huge deal. So you could probably expect to uh, pick these up for some kind of crazy discount, because that's kind of what they're counting on. Then again, maybe not, because you know what? I remember the first year, I think the Xbox One came out, and or maybe it was the Xbox One X I'm thinking of. Yeah, I wanted to I wanted to upgrade my Xbox One to an X, and I figured, well, you know what? Black Friday's coming up this year. I'll just, you know, I'll wait, and I'll get a crazy Black Friday deal, because those deals are always really good. Problem is, there was no Black Friday deal for the Xbox at that time because, um, and this is probably something Microsoft works out with the retailers, and I assume it might be the same with Sega, where they basically say, look, you know, this hardware is new, it's just on the market for a couple months, you can't already start slashing prices and then doing discounts yet. Is that going to be the case for the Sega Genesis Mini? I don't know, um, but I know it's it's due to launch September 19th. Uh, the pre-orders are setting at $79.99, so that's 80 big ones for what is essentially a shrunken down, teeny tiny Genesis box. It's going to be about this big. That's exactly the same as what the uh, NES Classic is, and I, uh, I haven't seen a PlayStation Classic. I don't even know if... Does Sony call it the PlayStation Classic? I'm not 100% sure about that, but... Uh, the, all the consoles are about the same. I think, like I said, I've never actually seen the PlayStation 1 in person, but they're all essentially the same. Genesis is going to be about the same. It's going to come in, come in, uh, packaged in with uh, 40 games. Uh, it's going to be plug and play. It'll have your classic uh, three-button controller. Um, it's going to be uh, USB-powered adapter, 
HDMI, of course, because you're going to have to run out to uh, the uh, HD TVs because none of us are uh, rolling with any CRTs anymore, unless you're a collector and you have a game room set up and you're you're down with that kind of thing. Uh, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the console itself and really the idea of the console um, and why, whether or not it's going to be a success. And there's three big hurdles that I think is going to get in its way because it's not surprising at all that Sega would roll with a, uh, a Genesis Mini, essentially an emulation box of 40 packed in games because it's already you've we've already seen that there's there's a market for that. It's not only among collectors, it's people who just want to play these games and and don't want to have a lot of hassle or fuss over trying to collect the games on their own or do it digitally or whatever the case may be. But will the Sega Genesis Mini, and this is the big question, will it actually do well this holiday season? Like I said, we only know half the library so far, but the Sega Genesis library is about... I want to say it's around 600 games, 700 games, something like that, in that ballpark. Don't quote me on that, but that's it's generally what it is. So they narrowed it down to 40. Is those 40 games enough or so appealing that it's going to sell this console on its own merits? It, there's a lot of X factors here. Now, the first thing that... The first hurdle that I think people have to think about whether or not the Sega Genesis Mini is going to be a success. Is is this enough of a niche concept? Or rather, I guess I should say, is it too much of a niche concept to be marketable, to be successful in a way that, that Sega would consider it to be profitable? It's, it's of course going to sell. It's going to sell some. But is it going to be a success in the eyes of, you know, profits? like a Nintendo Mini was. That thing was sold out forever. You could not get your hands on it whatsoever. Well, here's a couple things that may prevent it from being a success on that level. And to be honest, if I had to say so, I'd say it's probably not going to be that successful. It, it'll be moderately successful, and here's why. Number one, the Sega Genesis Mini is packing in 40 games from its six to 700 games library. And uh, the issue with that is this is not, Sega's not really offering anything here that has not already been offered in a million different flavors leading up till now. Now, if you have followed the previous generations, and I'm not talking just Xbox One and PS4, I'm talking 360, PlayStation 3, Xbox One, PlayStation 2, going all the way back, Sega has never had a problem licensing out its, its games. So there have been a ton of Sega Genesis compilations already released. I mean, you can probably play way more than 40 games for the Sega Genesis on your classic consoles. Consoles. If you have a Xbox 360 and an Xbox One, let's just say you have like one line of consoles. Let's say you're a PlayStation person or an Xbox person and you only have that hardware. You're still good. Because if it, most of it's backwards compatible, and there have been so many compilation games released that with so many, uh, a variety of so many different Sega games, you're not going to have a problem getting your Sega Genesis fix if you don't want to get into the emulation world. If you just want to do it on your console just for fun, and let's say you have a, a few core Sega Genesis games that you want to play, like your Sonics and your, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, really, Sonic, obviously, Sonic is the go-to mascot for uh, Sega Genesis. But the other big thing about Sega Genesis is it was huge on sports games. So it didn't have a, a ton of kind of uh, iconic flagship stuff that was only on Genesis. It was usually ports that was on Genesis and Super Nintendo and things like that. But the, the point is, whatever your favorite Genesis game is, if you even if you're not a Sonic fan, you probably already have access to it on one of those compilations. It's very easy to get, and to be honest, because they're older now, you can probably go to GameStop or some used game store or a flea market and pick it up for four bucks or five bucks or something crazy like that. So that's the first issue they're gonna run into. This is not exactly, like what's the appeal here besides a collector or someone who doesn't have one of those uh, uh, compilation discs already? Why am I going to buy a pack-in set of 40 games that I essentially already have in so many other different varieties. The second thing is 
kind of what I was just talking about, how if you're a Sega Genesis fan, you probably know Sonic. But if you're not a Genesis fan, that probably means you didn't grow up with the system. Now, Genesis obviously was part of the whole console war back in the 90s. Uh, I don't have to tell anybody that's my age or older about, you know, how important Genesis was to that period in gaming. But if you don't know the Genesis, or maybe you're just a little bit, maybe you're just the, you caught the tail end of it, and you're actually on the next gen, uh, generation after that, maybe you're more of a PlayStation 1 person, or, or you got into the CD-ROM uh, era just as it was starting, which is, is exactly where the Genesis cutoff point was. And that's kind of, they tried to jump into that with the Sega CD, and it didn't work out. So the next iteration of that is when the, the CD-ROM-based generation really blew up. Maybe that's where your gaming roots kind of dug in. So you're not as familiar with the Genesis, or maybe you know about it, but you just don't have any love for it. Like, if you see these games in this window right here, I played every single one of those games. Now, I just pulled that that randomly from the, the main uh, Genesis Mini site, because I needed a, I want a little screenshot representing some of the games. So I, I clipped out that randomly. But I can tell you, just looking at that, I have played one, two, three, four five, six, seven, at least six, maybe seven of those eight games I know I've played because I played the Genesis. I was a Genesis fan. I had a Genesis. I played it for years and I still love retro gaming. I still go back and play as much retro, if not more retro than I do modern stuff. So I'm a fan. If you're not a fan and the average gamer who's, let's face it, my age group is starting to age out of the prime marketing, uh, kind of window or, or the chunk of people that they're looking to market to, it's getting younger and younger. So the average young gamer doesn't have the attachment to the Genesis that they, like I would. Now you might say, well, that's kind of silly because the NES classic did really well, even among younger gamers. And it's even older than the Genesis. Well, yeah, that's true. But the problem is Nintendo is still a marketable brand. It's still out there. It's you, you still recognize Mario and all and, and just literally every one of the big Nintendo brands is still there and the Nintendo is still a thing you have the switch and you have the 3ds and you have everything that is still marketing so it has kept that brand alive it's kept those uh it's kept those characters and those franchises alive so that was different plus the the idea of retro Nint NES whether you're a retro collector or just a collector in general the NES will always be the the epitome of retro collecting, at least until the younger gamers start to get a little bit older. So it's more of a novelty just in name value alone than the Genesis. The Genesis does not have that nostalgia built into it and that kind of pop culture level of recognition. So that's the second hurdle. The third hurdle, which I kind of touched on earlier, is the fact that you're getting 40 packed in games and they want you to pay... $80. Now, unless you are a collector or someone that is just looking to quickly play some, some games uh, easily that you can just plug and play up to your TV, or maybe you're buying this for a, uh, if you're a, a, a aunt or uncle buying this for your, your younger niece and nephews, and you think this would be a cool gift, that that's fine. I get that. And that'll, that'll be a, a decent chunk of the profits that, that finally roll in. But there's a lot of people out there that look at that and say, "You want me to pay forty, or you want me to pay eighty dollars for forty games for a Genesis Mini, which, as far as we can tell, is not expandable unless you mod it or doing something crazy. It's essentially it's a one and done purchase, and then what you get is what you get. When for twenty plus years the emulation market or scene has blown up and continued to grow, to where you can actually, and of course I'm not suggesting you do this because." Uh, the ethics of it is a gray area for sure. But the, the fact of the matter is, whether I'm judging the right or wrong of it, it's a thing. Emulation is a thing. People have entire Genesis collections with every single game released in a folder that they can load into their emulator and play on a TV or throw it on a Raspberry Pi or whatever the case may be, or a modded console. And a lot of them are already playing the entire Genesis collection or nothing. And you want them to turn around and spend $80 on a console. Now, again, I get it. Gen Sega is not marketing this to those people. But the fact of the matter is you have to accept two things about that. Number one, that's going to take a huge uh, uh, chunk out of the appeal of this because it's not a must-have thing. You're not offering anything unique that's going to appeal to people that already have not only these 40 games, but every other game. 
and also not just the U.S. games that you know you have collections that were released for the uh, for the Mega Drive overseas, and you have all the the homebrew and hacks, and all of that opens up to that to that to that market, that idea of expandability. That's going to be a huge problem for people. Like, I would say, I would say at least. 10 to 20 percent of Sega Genesis fans already emulate the console. That, I think that's a pretty fair, that's a pretty fair estimate. Now, don't underestimate the importance of emulation. And believe me when I tell you, if it was not for the emulation scene all these years, and, and companies like Sega and Nintendo and these other companies on the record will tell you that emulation is wrong, it's illegal, it's stealing. Don't download ROMs because that's stealing and all these things. And, and and you know what? I'm not here to uh, to weigh in on that in this stream anyway. I'm not here to, to litigate that, the morals of that. But what I am going to tell you is make no mistake about it. If it was not for the popularity of the emulation scene of the last 20 plus years, you would not have an NES Classic. You would not have a Sega Genesis Mini. What that has done is shown the marketing people who was, they're not in charge of creative content, their job is to make money for the stockholders, bring money into the company. They saw a market for this. They saw that there is still an interest in retro gaming through collectors and people just wanting to play. And that's why you get these consoles. So it's kind of a, it's a weird double-edged sword. A lot of the emulation community is not going to go out and spend $80 on a, on a pack-in game of 40 games that they already have, but it's because of them that everyone else is getting this console. So it's, it's kind of a fun dichotomy. But I will say this. I wish Sega all the luck in the world. I want more stuff like this on the market. I want to see this be successful. And you know what? I'm telling you right now. If you're a Sega Genesis fan, or even if you think it's just a passing fad, it's just an, a novelty, a niche thing, I don't care. Go out and buy it, or buy it for someone else, or buy it for someone that you know is a gift. Because the more success retro products like this have on the market the more that retro fans like myself and all of you who are, you know, into uh, retro gaming, we're going to, it's only going to help us. It's only going to help grow our community, expand it. And, uh, it's only going to be a good thing for everybody. And with that guys, I think it's time for some Mortal Kombat. Now I will say I have been waiting for this patch to drop for a while. Not a while. My uh, editor for the site, uh, Jenny, shout out to Jenny, she brought it to my attention that there's going to be a patch coming soon that was going to give us a bunch of coins and things. So I thought that was going to be really cool that they, they're giving that away. So let's get this all fired up here, get this ready. Yeah, we're going to play. If you're just joining the stream, we are now going to load up some Mortal Kombat 11. We're going to do some grinding in the crypt. I guess it's not grinding. It's just unlocking. We're going to we're going to loot. We're going to loot the crypt. As soon as I get my uh, stuff on here. It's still early in the morning for me, so I had to get the coffee going. So yeah, the first thing I want to touch on before we actually jump into the crypt and start uh, looting it and, and unlocking some treasure chests is the fact that there's a lot of folks that aren't aware of the, the latest patch that just came out for the game and the huge rewards bonus that everyone gets and they get it for free. So if you're watching this and you don't follow, if you don't follow gaming news, you're not really up on what's going on with uh, Mortal Kombat or maybe you played it at launch and you haven't played it in a couple days, you should... Uh, make a note of this video, jump on your uh, Xbox or your PlayStation soon, and I, I suppose also the Switch. Um, there is a patch that just dropped. Um, it Mine for the Xbox came out last night. I'm not sure if some of the other consoles got it earlier, but I know that I signed on to the uh, the game, and I had been expecting it to come in uh, because I had read the, the patch notes and things. So there's a patch that fixed some technical problems, specifically with the Towers of Time, which is, if if you don't already know, that's a huge game component in this year's Mortal Kombat that NetherRealm Studios is really leaning on as a core part of the gameplay moving forward. The story mode is obviously important, but beyond that, you know, it's very short. 
And it's not really the thing that they're focusing on the most as the most important thing. The two things are obviously the online component, the multiplayer. But the other thing is the Towers of Time and how they're going to be able to monetize that and move that forward with fresh new content, things like that. Now, there was some issues with the Towers of Time uh, at launch. So NetherRealm Studios, and i got to give props to them, uh, they recognized that. They followed the community and the feedback, and uh, they fixed and tweaked some things. And so they released a patch that not only addressed the issues, but kind of as a thank you to those who were early adopters at launch and experienced those problems, they essentially said, look, here is a huge uh, rewards bonus. So they gifted like half a million uh, dragon coins, I think a thousand soul fragments, and I think it's 500 hearts to everybody for free. So if you have the game, you have them already waiting on you. All you have to do is sign into the game. You download the patch first, uh, sign into the game. You should get the prompt. You go into your uh, combat card, uh, go into the notifications, and just claim the reward. And it's there, and you get a huge bounty of stuff to uh, play with. So that's something that I think everybody should definitely take a look at if you have the game. Uh, it was really awesome that NetherRealm Studios took care of us like that. Props to them. And uh, if you haven't already... Go grab your loot, because it's waiting on you. And speaking of loot, we are going to raid a little bit ourselves. Let me get this pulled up here. So what we're going to do is... Now, last night after I downloaded the patch, I actually went into the crypt a little bit, and I used up a little bit of the coins trying to find some stuff. So my thing is I'm looking for a specific, a couple specific things. Uh, I may noob Cybot because I just love his play style. He's very similar to how I would play Smoke in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 because I like to flip around, uh, flip in combo, flip back out, and I use the teleport in between as kind of a way to keep people confused. I really, that's my play style. Try to keep you off your game, keep you, uh, I can, move around a lot, keep moving, keep moving. So I may noob. The problem is a couple of his skins are locked up in the crypt and the towers of time. And if you don't already know, it's the crypt is different than it was in the past where a lot of the, the, uh, the, the chests are not locked in their locations. Uh, you can't just go online and find a map so you have to actually, you have to actually basically get lucky. Uh, you can find the same, I, I believe the, the chests are all in the same locations. So if you down, if you opened a case at the same spot, say in the warrior shrine, I can also find that case there, I believe, but it'll, the contents will likely be different and it randomizes. So there's really no way for me to know if I'm going to even unlock what I'm looking for today. But what we're going to do is I have a I have almost 300,000 coins left of the 500,000. And also, by the way, uh, they gave you, I think, a, a thousand time stones. Or time gems or whatever they're called. So that was really cool, too, as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, we're just going to raid the crypt. We're just going to run around. I'm going to loot anything that's about 10,000 dragon coins or more because that typically is the, the ones with the skins. If you get anything lower than that, you end up with like character art or something. I'm also going to uh, unlock any of the, the soul fragment statues with the, the glowing green like prompt. Uh, those are 100 apiece, so we have 1,000 to spend there. And we're just going to keep our fingers crossed and we're going to just raid the crypt together and hopefully I unlock a couple Noob Saibot skins and a couple of his masks. That's the two things I'm looking for most because I want to deck them out. Oh, there's my alarm going off. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, I have an eye appointment <laughs> today, so I got to go get me some. Uh, I already wear contacts, but I think I'm going to grab some glasses, too, just because why not? Yeah, that was for that. So, but that's later on in the day. We got some raiding to do. So we're going to go into the crypt and we're just going to run around and hope that I find what I'm looking for. There's no guarantee, of course. So I can't remember where I actually left off at in the crypt. I think I'm in the warrior shrine, but I'm just going to run around and, and just try to find some stuff. So actually, I think I'm at Goro's. This is where Goro's lair is. 
I was there last night raiding a little bit. That's where I spent some of it. So I'm going to I'm going to run around up top for a while. Now, last night I unlocked the uh, the Raiden statue. If you don't already know, uh, if you if you see right here, you can put the the gem back. the 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 Raiden statue is destroyed, but if you fix it back. If you fix it back, it gives you uh, his broken staff. I haven't unlocked everything in the crypt yet. There's a bunch of keys and some areas I haven't unlocked yet. I haven't got all the items yet, but right now I'm just grinding for uh, skin. So here's one for 10,000. So we're doing anything 10,000 or more. Johnny Cage skin, but not the one I'm looking for. Now this one's only five. We'll do this one for 100. So we got a taunt, guard mask. I didn't open it. You gotta hold the A button down. Now, the other thing, too, is... Uh, I just got the... Oh, no, that's 1,800. I thought that was 18,000. I just got the... What is it? What's it called? I just got Scorpion Spear last night, so now I'm able to go in and, like... Do that. Which, that's pretty fun. That's how you actually earn hearts in the game if you don't want to buy them or grind for them. Because I haven't really spent a lot of time in the crypt because I knew... I knew it was randomized and that kind of bummed me out and I didn't want to just run around. And I, I spent up all the money I had. I mean, I, I played the, uh, the story mode. I think I earned about... I probably earned about four or five hundred thousand coins on my own just messing around and playing and then... After a while, I had spent it all in the crypt, and I couldn't really do anything else, so I just kind of got stuck. So I haven't spent a whole lot of time in the crypt yet. I mean, it's definitely fun, and I can see how, you know, there's going to be a lot of, like, unlockable stuff. There's probably secrets in the crypt that none of us even know about yet, like, you know, a couple months from now. They'll reveal something, like, if you unlock every single thing or go to these secret areas... You might have some fun things you can unlock. But yeah, here's what I was actually going to uh, mention before. So these Shao Kahn uh, chests are... I don't know if they're rare. I only see them every once in a while. I know the Kronika ones are kind of rare. But here's the thing. So these actually cost different... These are 250 hearts, which that's kind of expensive in the fact that the hearts are pretty hard to get. And I opened one or two so far. Now, they'll give you more loot overall... And it's kind of better loot, but it's not necessarily loot that I'm looking for. So it's kind of, it's kind of a bummer when you don't get what you want. Now I have it's 257. I have 200 and or it's 250. I have 257. I'll go ahead and open it just to let you guys see what it looks like on stream. But there's no guarantee it's going to be what I'm looking for. But we'll we'll try it out just to let you guys see what it looks like. So items unlocked. So as you can see, you got a bunch more than you normally would, but I can, just at a glance, again, I can see I wasted my 250 because there's nothing here I'm looking for. It's Sonya. It's all Sonya stuff. Uh, she's got her army brat skin. Um, let's see, some headgear. Some uh, she got her one of her augments. That's kind of cool. And her brutality. I mean, that's cool for sure if you're a Sonya player, but I kind of stick to the same few people. And the reason I stick to the same few people is because this game online ridiculously competitive like people online like depending on who I play against it's it's it can be challenging to try to keep up because everybody's it really good there it doesn't seem like there's there's really no schlub players everybody basically has been practicing, they got their combos down, and I mean, I do too. I mean, I have a decent record online. I think I'm... I th I just got Sindel's Brush. Was that a... Was that a consumable? Why the hell would I need Sindel's Brush? Alright. See, that's what I'm saying. A lot of this is... It feels like wasting your, your stuff if you don't get things that you really, really want. I wish there was a way be able to go in and actually get certain things that you actually need for characters you want. 
like I said, my, my record's not bad. I think I'm like 20 and 12 or 20 and some. Oh, God, 10,000 soul fragments. What is in this? Jeez, that's got to be something good. This 10,000 soul fragments in the dead woods. If anybody knows in the chat what that is, tell me. I don't even have enough to do it, but man, that better be good. If I spent 10,000 and didn't get something I really like, I'd be pissed. And again, you can see I've blowed through a significant amount of my my uh, money and my fragments. And so far, I have not got what I'm looking for. Not even I haven't even got one thing I'm looking for yet, so that's kind of a bummer. All right, so. Now I will say there is one there's one saving grace to this. In the uh the menu, because they did gift us with a thousand time gems, I think it's what it's called. Let me look what's that. what is it called? Can I look that up? Okay, I think it's it's time gems or time stones or whatever the time crystals, maybe that's it. Now, if you can't find what you're looking for in the crypt, which, if it continues to go in the trend that it has been, uh, I may not find what I'm looking for. You can buy certain skins uh, in the in the online store. The problem with that is you can't just buy them outright. You have to wait until they are featured, and then I think every day Netherrealm Studios will feature like four or five different items in the store that kind of come up for purchase. And then once they're gone, they're gone. You have to either go into the crypt or unlock them somewhere else or however else they do. But if they happen to come available as a featured item, you can buy them with time crystals. Now, if I spend all of my money here and all of my soul gems here and don't find anything that I'm looking for for Noob Cybot specifically, um, because like I said, I'm wanting to finish up my uh, customization for him. I have him set up pretty much how I want him. I have all of the, uh, I have the special moves set up the way that I like to combo things and the way I like to do stuff. How can I get to that one? Why can't I get to that? Can I go right here? Oh, yeah, gotta go on the bridge. I have him set up basically how I want. I don't have any augments yet, but... Other than that, I have him set basically how I want. Yeah, I want to finish the customization options for him. I don't know what I'm doing here, by the way. I have saw this puzzle before, and you got to rotate it and line this up, and I don't exactly know what the trick is, so I'm just randomly hoping I get lucky. But yeah, if I can, if I can catch it on a time that they feature some of the skins or some of the face masks that I'm looking for... I will be able to purchase them using the time crystals. And now they are kind of expensive, and that's where Netherrealm Studios is hoping to, to lift object. What is this? Oh, no. Ooh, nice. I got a 250,000 coins. What? Did you guys just see that? Whoa. That's expensive. What is in that thing? That better be like an extra character or something, and I know that's not even a thing yet. So I'm literally, okay, so if you missed that, I'm literally running through here. I see a green glowing orb in the water. It charges me 250 or 300 just to lift it, and then there's a quarter million dollar case that showed up out of, out of the, that rose up out of the water that just appeared. And I have 243,000 coins. So, needless to say, I don't think I'll ever be opening this case, because... Even if I had... I mean, I could probably grind for, what is it, 7,000 more coins, and come back and get that, but then I'll be done. I won't be able to open anything else, and... Kind of sucks, and I don't think I'm going to be able to grind away 250,000 more dragon coins. I mean, I could buy it, and see, that goes to the point I was just making. Not only can you buy things in the in the store for the skin, which is kind of what they're like. If I can't find the skin I'm looking for in the crypt, and they feature it on the store, and you don't have enough time stones or time gems, they want you to buy the packages, which will give you more coins and more gems. So that's how they're monetizing the store, and that's a lot of what people have been critical of the the microtransaction model that they're using. Which, it makes it harder to get some of these items, and this is, I don't even know how, 
I would ever get enough money to come back and open this because the story mode's done. I've already grinded through a bunch of the the towers. And I mean, I plan to play the game fairly regularly. I mean, I'm enjoying it, but am I going to make enough in grinding to get 250,000 more coins to come back and unlock this? Probably not. So uh, this has to be one of those go buy a coin package and then come back and open it. So I'm going to have to Google that. But see, I, can I Google it? Because as I said, these are all randomized. So what is this case, guys? What is this? This is a super ridiculously expensive case. What is this? What? Someone tell me. Did I just unlock a super secret, super unlockable for Mortal Kombat 11? I think I did. Did I? I think I did. I hope I did. All right, you know what? I'm going to put this up on YouTube. Somebody tell me. Somebody message me in the comments. Somebody hit me on social media. Somebody tell me what this is because this is crazy this is ridiculous i can't even imagine what would they put in a 250,000 dragon coin case there can't be any characters in there i've already unlocked all the characters there's no dlc yet they haven't announced any secret characters i have all the maps unlocked guys what is in this case all right anyway Back to the grind. Man, I'm really curious. That's gonna bug me now. That is gonna bug the crap out of me. And then you got this one over here. This thing that's like 10,000 soul fragments just to unlock it. This is where I got Shao Kahn's hammer, I believe, which allowed me to bust down some doors and things. I think I'm going the wrong way. I think I'm backtracking. Let me look at my map. I think I'm going back. Yeah, I think I'm back at the start of the game. So, all right, back this way. So, I've already been through here. Yeah, again, guys, if you're just joining us, I'm just looting the crypt. Uh, I'm taking advantage of my free 500,000 dragon coins that I was gifted, and that everyone was gifted by NetherRealm Studios with the patch. Looking for some noob Cybot skins, so we're only opening cases that are 10,000 or more, or close to it. I'm trying not to get lost, because I keep getting turned around. But here's one for five. Here's a 10,000. Let's see what we get. I mean, I'm getting tons of skins. Problem is, I'm not getting any of the skins I want. I want Noob Cybot. I also take Scorpion. Now, for you folks out there that hate both of those characters, because I see a lot of hate for Scorpion players, and the only person... The only person that seems to come close to the Scorpion hate is Noob. Now, I love him. I didn't think I was going to play with him at all. He wasn't, like, I knew he was in the game, but he wasn't really on my radar as, like, a go-to character. But I used to play the crap out of Noob Smoke back on, I think, Mortal Kombat Deception. Or is it Deadly Alliance? I can't remember which one. But they played really cool in that game, but also... I'm still a huge Mortal Kombat 3 fan, and to this day, if I'm playing Mortal Kombat 3 or Ultimate, I'll go to uh, Cyber Smoke, because his his teleport punch where he goes down the bottom of the screen and out the top, it's really good for uh, keeping your opponent confused and keeping them on their toes. You never know exactly where you're going to show up, and also, they set it up where you can do it from the air, so you can jump in the air and then go straight into it, so a lot of people think you're coming in for a jump kick. You teleport down, come up behind him, do the uppercut, and then it... In Mortal Kombat 3, it bounces him in the air. It juggles him, so you can hit him with the spear, do some combos. It's great. And that's kind of my jam. So, needless to say, I was really surprised when I saw that Noob Cybot essentially has that exact move. He teleports down through a... Like a portal, and he comes out the top. And then if you uh, amplify it, he'll actually... He kind of comes out of the move early, so it allows you to essentially combo the person a second time before they hit the ground. So it has opened up a lot of possibilities in my gameplay style. Uh, I'm able to pull off like a 
like a 10 or 12 hit combo for I think like almost 40% damage just in one combo. If I do like a, a jump in combo, uh, a jump punch into a combo, then the teleport, you uh, hit the uh, amplify and then do like a, a jump kick into another teleport. Yeah, it's crazy because the other thing you have to remember if you're playing this game, the number of hits you're going to get, like the, the largest combo is not, ooh, we got a Chronica Sphere. Uh, so we'll open that in a second, but if you're, quick combo tip, don't always go for the maximum number of hits you can get from a combo. There's something in the game called, uh, damage, damage balancing or damage grading. I can't remember exactly what the term is. They, they, uh, I think they talk about it in the tutorial, but the point is there's a system where as you continue to hit your opponent, the amount of damage you do continues to go down and down and down. So it's not, it's that way you don't just destroy your opponent and, and make the match unfair because you catch him in a really long, you know, cheap combo, or especially if you catch him in the corner or something. So there's combos. I can get up to like a 14, 15 hit combo with new, but by the time it, uh, by the time it's finished, the amount of damage I've done is lower. So there's one, I think, I have like a 9-hit combo that does more damage than the 12, 13, 14-hit, and that's kind of the one that I, I do the most. So keep that in mind. If you have a good combo that's not as flashy, but you know it's doing more damage, at the end of the day, getting to the fatality screen and getting the W is what's, you know, the important thing about the match. So don't worry about the number of hits in your combo. Just try to focus on something that's fun for you, but also... Keep in mind that you're going to lose damage as you continue to just juggle and juggle and keep hitting them and punishing them. So keep that in mind. Having said that, we have a 5,000 uh, Dragon Coin Chronica Sphere here. Now these are a little more rare. If you haven't been in the crypt, they just kind of show up randomly. Um, and they don't always appear every time you're in here. Now it's only 5,000 coins, but I think because it's more rare, you get better loot. So we'll we'll spend 5,000 just to see. Hopefully it's not character art, but we'll see. See what we get. Wow. Oh, nice. Nice. So yeah, see, so definitely if you see a Chronica Sphere, grab it. Because it's, even though it doesn't cost that much, you get lots of good loot. Now I'm not going to use any of this loot personally because it's... Sonya Glove, uh, Jackson Briggs Thumper, Tower Consumable. The top row doesn't interest me. Very interested in the bottom row. So I basically made 20,000 coins on that. I spent five, and they gave me 25 in addition to the other things. So that was awesome. Sometimes the little uh, secret things pay off. Still sitting at over 200,000 coins of our... Nether Realm bonus that we uh, picked up last night. Like I said, if you have the game, you should already have these coins. Let me take a look at the map, see where I am. I think I can run across here. I came through that wall, I think. So let me unlock this room a couple days ago. Wait, I just came from there, right? Yeah. I think. I didn't come from down here, though. There's an error contacting the Mortal Kombat server. What the heck? It just kicked me out of the crypt. That was weird. Back to the main menu. That's, that's kind of weird. I don't know what's going on with it. Well, I tell you what, guys. Since we got bumped off the uh, the server, uh, we'll go ahead and call that a day for now. But it was still fun, you know, getting to grind a little bit. I think what maybe what I'll do is I'll save the rest of the coins for another night, or maybe what I'll do is uh, I might grind a little bit on my own uh, to see if I can maybe unlock some of the stuff I'm looking for. Not 100% sure if... Uh, if I'm going to find what I'm looking for, like I said, I want those noob skins. I want the uh, the masks. I'll take Scorpion as an alternative. Uh, but to be honest, if I had to, if I had to, uh, if I had to guess, I say I'm probably going to have to wait until some of the skins uh, for 
the characters I'm looking for are just featured on the store and then buy them with the time crystals. Luckily, and again, this goes back to the patch, I was just gifted enough time crystals to pretty much buy any skin that I want, at least the first couple ones, if I just wait and I'm patient, because I'm not really going to use them for anything else, I don't think. So I'll probably just have to wait until they show up and just buy them on the store. But uh, anyway, guys, I appreciate you uh, stopping by, checking out the stream. Uh, we will be playing some more Mortal Kombat, I'm sure, at some point in the future. So be sure to uh, stop by, and uh, until next time, catch you guys later.